Uh, I was just wondering what the distribution is on this orchid. You know, what's the range of this plant? It's actually really broadly distributed all across North America in cold, temperate areas, and also all around the globe in cold, temperate areas. So it has a wide dis distribution, but where it actually occurs within that distribution is very specific. It has to have a, the right kind of substrate. It has to have the right kind of drainage. And it also lives in association with the fungus. The fungus lives in its roots, and the fungus lives off the plant metabolites, and the plant gets nutrients from the fungus. So it's a very mutualistic relationship. But that fungus is very specific to the plant, and it too has a distribution. And that fungus may not occur just 10 feet away, but occur in this spot. This has a sweet, musty fragrance, and it advertises like it's going to have a really nice reward. So bees, beetles, all kinds of things get attracted to this, but only bees of the right shape and size actually act as pollinators, and that is really interesting. Here is a little fly right on cue. Anyway, um, bees get attracted to this because they're looking for food, and they crawl into this lip, and this lip is a modified petal. Once they get in there, they don't find any food. It's actually a trap, and they become trapped inside of this beautiful little flower. The only way out is a passageway along the back. It's a tiny little passageway, and they have to crawl along that passageway, and they exit in a tiny little spot. You probably can't see it, but it's right by the anther, right there, in a really tight squeeze. How they get out is a really interesting question, and we had done some experiments to figure out what cues actually induce that pollinator to get out the right direction. But in any event, when it's going out, if it happened to be at another plant, it will pick up some pollen, and in its path going out, it scrapes off, the plant does scrape off the pollen that's on the back of the insect, and the plant becomes pollinated. But then it has to get out, so it squeezes out this really narrow hole right there, and in doing so, picks up a new wad of pollen on its dorsal surface and then flies away. Right now, we're very concerned about global warming, and we're very concerned about what impact that's going to have on flowering and fruiting of our native vegetation. We have a problem in that the timing of the plants when they bloom and the timing of the emergence of pollinators may be offset because they don't always use the same cues for their emergence. So that means if a pollinator emerges too soon, it may not have a plant to feed on. And that means the plant, when it finally comes up, won't have a pollinator to pollinate it. So we need systems in which we can study timing, for example, of plants and pollinators. And that kind of question could be applied to this system. Okay, so what I've been doing is literally just going out into the college woods and we know um, that these specific type of bees, which are called Andrina, like very sandy sto soil, very compact soil. And just recently, as in two days ago, I think I've actually found the bee that we've been looking for. Yeah, she came to class the other day and I was prattling on about something else and I could see that she was just was dying. She was just dying to tell me. And yeah. then I said, Stephanie, you want to tell me something? And she said, I found it. Yeah. <laughs>